Hi everybody. In this video, Forrest Finn talks about his art business. And I think there's four or five clips in the video. Uh, I'll explain why. When we got to his house, we weren't sure what to expect. So we only took our cell phones in. We didn't take any fancy camera equipment. We don't really have fancy camera equipment anyways, but um, we did have tripod, GoPro, things like that. But um, we had been there probably about an hour and he said, all of a sudden he said, aren't you gonna put this on YouTube? Aren't you gonna take pictures? I said, can I? And he said, sure. So I went ahead and uh, my husband recorded the rest of our conversations and in between when he felt like there was a break in the conversation, he would stop recording and then he would start back up again. But um, there were so many uh, stories that Forrest Finn told us about I really wasn't prepared, honestly, that he would just be so kind and spending so much time with us. It was a wonderful visit. He is just a really generous, kind person. And uh, so I just want to let you guys know that the video might seem a little choppy, like it's been cut up or, or something, but it hasn't. That's really how the video is. It's different clips that are put together for this. So I hope you guys enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> I had to laugh about that. Well, I'll tell you, I've, I've always had a chip on my shoulder because I'm un uneducated. My father had a master's degree and, and uh, I tell people I went to Texas A&M and that's true. I was there four days. They called me to finance to go pay for my tuition, and I, I ran out the back door, climbed through the fence, and hitchhiked home. But, mm -hmm. but uh, when I retired from the Air Force in 1972, I had, I think my retirement pay was $800 a month with a wife and two young daughters. And you know, I told myself, how am I going to compete? I, mean, I, I, wanted, I wanted my worst client to give me $3,500. That eliminates one hour modernizing the restaurant business, J.C. Penney. I mean, it, I, I wanted to deal in luxuries, and I did. The last thing I wanted to deal in was necessities. Necessities are cheap and they're time consuming, and they uh, And so that meant to me that meant the art business, but I had no experience, no education, and, and no art. That, that was what I was facing. I, my wife and I plastered a building sleeping on the floor in Santa Fe. And, but I told myself, I can compete if I, could, if I can make them think I'm an expert. And so I had a little bit of money left and I started advertising full page color in the best magazines of the day. Mm -hmm. If you advertise full page color, that, that means you're an expert. <laughs> yeah. And so it, 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 it started working out. And my first two shows, I didn't sell anything, not even a book. And I told myself, I had a few bucks left. I said, I'm going to spend this money on advertising. And I said, if that doesn't work, I'm going to go work for McDonald's flipping hamburgers. But it start, started working. And, and uh, after a couple of years, people began to think that I was an expert, so I hired a full-time research librarian oh. to help me become an expert. And uh, I used to have museum people in the gallery, the director of the Metropolitan Museum wrote me a letter one time. I said, Mr. Finn, can you help me with blah, 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 blah. And I said, he signed his name, Joe Smith, Ph.D. And I wrote him back and said, sure, the answer is blah, 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 blah. Forrest Finn, N-A-D-T. <laughs> N-A-D-T, not a damn thing. <laughs> and I wanted one more letter behind my name than PhD. Uh, nobody ever uh, called me on that. <laughs> so it, it's my little fight, fight against educated people. And, and it's, it's been fun, but I, but I, know, I know who the loser is. <laughs> and... But it's been so much fun, I mean, because I, I, I have my own publishing company. That means I can do what I want to with my books. And I wrote a, 
I wrote four books about artists because I, I'm, I, if you write a book about an artist, you're the expert on that artist. That's the rule. And that's why I wrote my short book. And then I, I wrote a second short book, but I wrote a book about William R. Lee, Eric Sloan, and Nikolai Fashion and Leon Gaspard. And, and uh, when you do a lot of research and, and you buy a lot of those paintings, you know, by osmosis, you get to know a lot about, about the subject. Right. Uh, one afternoon, I bought 235 Gaspard paintings. I had <laughs> leaned against the wall up and down my gallery, and, and you learn so much about technique, palette, subject, and uh, little artists like to do little things in a painting that. Like Gaspard, for instance, would he painted three-dimensional paintings. Those are couplers in in Russia in in the Kremlin are round. He would take gold leaf and and make them round. I mean, they're three-dimensional paintings. It was so much fun to mm -hmm. run your hand over that and and feel that. And after after years and years of doing that, you you, you absorb some information and, and things that that they don't teach in colleges. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I wanted to write my books, to tell the other side of the story. And my sharp books, The Beat of the Drum and the Hoop and the Dance, is, it's rare, very rare and out of print today, but, but I've never been much for bibliography and index and that kind of stuff. I, you know, it's just too much work for me. Mm -hmm. But in my sharp book, I did have, a, a, I think, a two-page bibliography, but I didn't list anything in my bibliography that I didn't own the original source material for. Oh, okay. Wow. And the wonderful library where ledgers and IRS reports and that was full of that kind of stuff. So, and that, it was with that material that I wrote my Gaspard book. And it's written in a different technique than, than by memoirs. I mean, I, mm -hmm. I, was, I was pretty straightforward and, 